puede ser paralítico. Y si Jesús estaba aquí y corría los milagros acá, seguramente hay poder en el suelo. Tal vez hay poder en las rocas. Entonces él se agachó y agarró una piedra para dar I am here uh, with evangelist Jason Friend. Uh, Jason, thanks for being with me. I got a chance to hang out with him this morning and ask some questions. Uh, we are in Reno, Nevada. So Jason, tell us what we're doing today and just a little bit about your ministry. We're having an evangelistic outreach here in Reno. We've got probably seven or 8,000 Hispanics here in the arena. It's an exciting time because they come very hungry. They're not church people. Culturally, they come from a traditional background, but they're here in the United States, they're hungry, they're looking for God, and so we're going to present them the gospel of Jesus Christ. I come, myself, I come from a broken family, I come from a dysfunctional home, a crazy family. When I was three, my parents were separated. When I was nine, they were divorced. And so I understand what it means to be broken, to be raised in a dysfunctional home, needing to fill the void in my heart, and I found Christ at 15 years of age. Since the age of 25, my wife and I have been serving as missionaries throughout Latin America. We hold open air crusades, and this is another outreach. It's stateside, but we're really excited to see God do the things that He's doing here. Now, Jason, tell us a little bit about the hunger level that you're seeing among the Latin Americans and just the Latin population for those that are not familiar. It's amazing. It's fair to say that the Hispanic people are the most receptive people group in the history of the world to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Per capita, they are coming to know the Lord at 400 people every hour of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year, 24 hours a day. Wow. It's one of the strongest uh, movements historically for the church, for people to move into the kingdom of God, and that has been among the Hispanic people. And it doesn't show any end in sight. So the projections are very positive. It's probably one of the best seasons to be involved in ministry, especially as an evangelist in Latin America. We're seeing a tremendous, and we understand that we're able to see the harvest that we're, we're able to see because of the pioneers that went before us and laid the foundation. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be seeing the results that we're seeing today. Amen. And what are you hoping to see God do today, Jason? I'm looking forward to probably a thousand people giving their lives to Christ, in addition to many people who will be healed. You'll see healings all throughout the entire area, simply because they believe. You tell them you just need to believe God for healing or believe God for a miracle, and they'll say, okay. They haven't been contaminated by a spirit of doubt, and they haven't been diluted. Their faith hasn't been diluted. So they, they have a childlike faith, and that's probably one of the reasons why we see the kinds of miracles that we see. And so we're looking for salvation. We're looking for people to be delivered and healed this morning. Amen. Last question. Uh, it was great to get to meet your wife, Cindy. Uh, Jason is married to a wonderful woman, has, uh, is it three daughters? Three daughters. Yeah. Uh, how do you, how, what do you have to say about the joy of um, knowing your family is with you in the ministry? And is that a challenge to balance the, the, the ministry and the family balance at it all? It is. I always made sure that my daughters and my wife knew that they were more important than the ministry. No one's more important than the Lord, but they were more important than the ministry. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to make that distinction between the two. My wife is my best friend. Um, she's the one that I love with my life, be willing to give my life for, and my daughters as well. And they understood that they had priority, but we always gave them the opportunity to fulfill God's call upon their lives mm -hmm. in our evangelistic outreaches. We always said, Everyone's got a call to do something, not just to sit there in the pews, but to do something, to participate. And our girls took that to heart and they participated. Because of that, they had ownership. And when you have ownership, now you have a stake in the results. And Amen. that's why we see that they're so dedicated to the Lord and they continue to serve the Lord, even in their secular positions. It's great to see how God has used them and how faithful they are to the Lord. Amen. Jason, would you just say a 15-second prayer for anyone watching this video, just that the Lord would stir up their hearts for the harvest where they Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Lord, I pray right now that you would bless the person that is watching on the other end, on the other end of, this, of this connection. I pray, whether it's via internet or via television, that you would bless them, but stir up in their heart, Lord, the desire to win the lost, those who desperately need to come to Jesus, that that burden that you have for the lost would be the very heartbeat of the viewer that is watching at this moment, Lord. Give them your heart for the, for the lost and give them your heart for those who are hurting. And I pray that you'd give them the words 
in order to make that a reality in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank we you. appreciate, appreciate you. It.